Caliban and the Witch section, Witch Hunting and Class Revolt. As we can see from these cases, the witch hunt grew in a social environment where the, quote, better sorts were living in constant fear of the, quote, lower classes, who could certainly be expected to harbor evil thoughts, because in this period they were losing everything they had. That this fear expressing itself as an attack on popular magic is not surprising. The battle against magic has always accompanied the development of capitalism to this very day. Magic is premised on the belief that the world is animated, unpredictable, and that there is a force in all things, quote, water, trees, substances, words, so that every event is interpreted as the expression of an occult power that must be deciphered and bent to one's will. What this implied in everyday life is described, probably with some exaggeration, in the letter of a German minister sent after a pastoral visit to a village in 1594. Quote, the use of incantations is so widespread that there is no man or woman here who begins to do anything without first taking recourse to some sign, incantation, magic, or pagan means. For example, during labor pains, when picking up or putting down the child, when taking the beast to the field, when they have lost an object or failed to find it, closing the windows at night, when someone gets ill or a cow behaves in a strange way, they run at once to the soothsayer to ask who robbed them, who's enchanted them, or to get an amulet. The daily experience of these people shows there is no limit to the use of superstitions. Everyone here takes part in superstitious practices, with words, names, rhymes, using the names of God, of the Holy Trinity, of the Virgin Mary, of the Twelve Apostles. These words are uttered both openly and in secret. They are written on pieces of paper, swallowed, carried as amulets. They also make strange signs, noises, and gestures. And then they practice magic with herbs, roots, and the branches of a certain tree. They have their particular day and place for all these things. End quote. As Stephen Wilson points out in The Magical Universe, the people who practiced these rituals were mostly poor people who struggled to survive, always trying to stave off disease and wishing, therefore, quote, to placate, cajole, and even manipulate these controlling forces, to keep away harm and evil, and to procure the good which consisted of fertility, well-being, health, and life." End quote. But in the eyes of the new capitalist class, this anarchic, molecular conception of the diffusion of power in the world was anathema. Aiming at controlling nature, the capitalist organization of work must refuse the unpredictability implicit in the practice of magic and the possibility of establishing a privileged relation with the natural elements, as well as the belief in the existence of powers available only to particular individuals, and thus not easily generalized and exploitable. Magic was also an obstacle to the rationalization of the work process, and a threat to the establishment of the principle of individual responsibility. Above all, magic seemed a form of refusal of work, of insubordination, and an instrument of grassroots resistance to power. The world had to be, quote, disenchanted in order to be dominated. By the 16th century, the attack against magic was well underway, and women were its most likely targets. Even when they were not expert sorcerers or magicians, they were the ones who were called to mark animals when they fell sick, heal their neighbors, help them find lost or stolen objects, give them amulets or love potions help them forecast the future. Though the witch hunt targeted a broad variety of female practices, it was, above all, in this capacity, as sorcerers, healers, performers of incantations, and divinations, that women were persecuted. Footnote. As the witch hunt expanded, however, the distinctions between the professional witch and those who turned to her for help or engaged in magical practices without any special claim to expertise were blurred. And footnote. For their claim to magical power undermined the power of the authorities and the state, giving confidence to the poor in their ability to manipulate the natural and social environment, and possibly subvert the constituted order. It is doubtful, on the other hand, that the magical arts that women had practiced for generations would have been magnified into a demonic conspiracy had they not occurred against a background of intense social crisis and struggle. The coincidence between social economic crisis and witch hunting has been noted by Henry Kamen, who has observed 
that it was, quote, precisely in this period when there was a main price hike between the end of the 16th century and the first half of the 17th, that there were the greatest number of charges and persecutions, end quote. Footnote. Middlefort, too, sees a connection between the price revolution and the persecution of the witches. Commenting upon the escalation of witch trials in southwestern Germany after 1620, he writes, The years 1622-23 to saw the total disruption of coinage. Money became so depreciated that prices soared out of sight. Food prices, moreover, did not need monetary policy to rise. The year 1625 had a cold spring and bad harvests from Würzburg across Württemberg to the whole Rhine Valley. The next year found famine along the Rhine Valley. These conditions of themselves drove prices beyond what many laborers could afford. End of footnote. Even more significant is the coincidence between the intensification of the persecution and the explosion of urban and rural revolts. These were the, quote, peasant wars against land privatization, including the uprisings against the, quote, enclosures in England. In 1549, 1607, 1628, 1631, when hundreds of men, women, and children, armed with pitchforks and spades, set about destroying the fences erected around the commons, proclaiming that, quote, from now on we needn't work anymore. In France, in 1593-95, to there was the revolt of the croquants against the tithes, excessive taxation, and the rising price of bread, a phenomenon that caused mass starvation in large areas of Europe. During these revolts, it was often women who initiated and led the action. Exemplary were the revolt that occurred at Montpellier in 1645, which was started by women who were seeking to protect their children from starvation, and the revolt at Cordoba in 1652 that likewise was initiated by women. It was women, moreover, who, after the revolts were crushed, with many men imprisoned or slaughtered, remained to carry on the resistance, although in a more subterranean manner. This is what may have happened in southwestern Germany, where a witch hunt where a witch hunt was followed by two decades at the end of the peasant war. Writing on the subject, Eric Middleford has excluded the existence of a connection between these two phenomena. However, he has not asked if there were family or community relations, such as the ones Leroy Ladurie found in the Cervennes, between the thousands of peasants who, from 1476 to 1525, continuously rose up in arms against feudal power and were so brutally defeated, and the scores of women who, less than two decades later, in the same region and villages, were brought to the stake. Footnote. Writes Leroy Ladurie, quote, between these frenzied uprisings, the witch hunts, and popular authentic revolts, which also reached their climax in the same mountains, about 1580 to 1600, there existed a series of geographical, chronological, and sometimes family coincidences. End of footnote. Yet we can well imagine that the ferocious work of repression which the German princes conducted, and the hundreds of thousands of peasants crucified, decapitated, burned alive, sedimented unquenchable hatreds, secret plans of revenge, above all among older women who had seen and remembered, and were likely to make their hostility known in numerous ways to the local elites. A graph. This graph, indicating the dynamics of the witch trials between 1505 and 1650, refers specifically to the area of Namur and Lorraine in France but it is representative of the persecution in other European countries. Everywhere, the key decades were those from the 1550s to the 1630s, when the price of food escalated. End of caption. The persecution of witches grew on this terrain. It was class war carried out by other means. In this context, we cannot fail to see a connection between the fear of uprising and the prosecutor's insistence on the witch's sabbat, or synagogue the famous nocturnal reunion, where thousands of people presumably congregated, traveling often from far, distant places. Footnote. In the obsession with the Sabbat, or synagogue, as the mythical witches' gathering was called, we find a proof of the continuity between the persecution of the witches and the persecution of the Jews. As heretics and propagators of Arabic wisdom, Jews were regarded as sorcerers, poisoners, and devil worshippers, 
to the portrait of Jews as devilish beings contributed to the tales surrounding the practice of circumcision, which claimed that Jews ritually murdered children. Quote, Time and again, the Jews were described in the miracle plays as well as in sketches as devils from hell, enemies of the human race. End quote. On the connection between the persecution of the Jews and the witch hunt, see also Carlo Ginsberg's Ecstasies, chapters 1 and 2. End footnote. Whether or not, by evoking the horrors of the Sabbath, the authorities targeted actual forms of organization cannot be established. But there is no doubt that, through the judge's obsession with these devilish gatherings, besides the echo of the persecution of the Jews, we hear the echo of the secret meetings the peasants held at night, on lonesome hills and in the forests, to plot their revolts. Footnote. The reference here is to the conspirators of the Bunshu, the German peasant union, whose symbol was the clog, which in the 1490s, in Alsace, plotted to rise against the church and the castle. Of them, Friedrich Engels wrote that they were wont to hold their meetings at night on the lonesome Hunger Hill. End of footnote. The Italian historian Luisa Muraro has written on this matter in La Signora del Giococo, The Lady of the Game, a study of witch trials that took place in the Italian Alps at the beginning of the 16th century. Beginning of long quote. During the trials in Val di Fiam, one of the accused spontaneously told the judges that one night, while she was in the mountains with her mother-in-law, she saw a great fire in the distance. Run away, run away, her grandmother had cried. This is the fire of the lady of the game. Game, in many dialects of northern Italy, is the oldest name for the Sabbat. In the trials of Val Fiam, there is still mention of a female figure who directed the game. In the same region, in 1525, there was a vast peasant uprising. They demanded the elimination of tithes and tributes, the freedom to hunt, less convents, hostels for the poor, the right of each village to elect its priest. They burned castles, convents, and the clergy's houses. But they were defeated, massacred, and those who survived for years were hunted by the revenge of the authorities. Moraro concludes, beginning of long quote, The fire of the lady of the game fades in the distance while in the foreground there are the fires of the revolt and the pyres of the repression. But to us, there seems to be a connection between the peasant revolt that was being prepared and the tales of mysterious nightly gathering. We can only assume that the peasants at night secretly met around a fire to warm up and to communicate with each other, and that those who knew guarded the secret of these forbidden meetings by appealing to the old legend. If the witches had secrets, this may have been one. End of quote. Class revolt, together with sexual transgression, was a central element in the depictions of the Sabbat, which was portrayed both as a monstrous sexual orgy and as a subversive political gathering, culminating with an account of the crimes which the participants had committed, and with the devil instructing the witches to rebel against their masters. It is also significant that the pact between the witch and the devil was called conjuriatio, like the packs often made by slaves and workers in struggle, and that in the eyes of the prosecutors, the devil represented a promise of love, power, and riches for whose sake a person was willing to sell her or his soul, that is, to infringe every natural and social law. The threat of cannibalism, a central theme in the morphology of the Sabbat, also recalls, according to Henry Kamen, the morphology of the revolts as rebel workers at times showed their contempt for those who sold their blood by threatening to eat them. Footnote. The Italian historian Luciano Parinetto has suggested that the theme of cannibalism may be an import from the New World, as cannibalism and devil worship merged in the reports about the, quote, Indians, made by the conquistadors and their clerical accomplices. In support of this thesis, Perinetto cites Francesco Maria Guazzo's Compendium Maleficarum, 1608, which in his view demonstrates that demonologists in Europe were influenced in their portrayal of witches as cannibals by the reports coming in from the New World. However, witches in Europe were accused of sacrificing children to the devil long before the conquest and colonization of the Americas. End footnote.
Cayman mentions what happened in the town of Romans, Dauphine, France, in the winter of 1580, when the peasants in revolt against the tithes proclaimed that, quote, before three days Christian flesh will be sold, and then, during the carnival, quote, the rebel's leader, dressed in a bearskin, ate delicacies which passed for Christian flesh, end quote. Again, in Naples in 1585, during a riot against the high cost of bread, the rebels mutilated the body of a magistrate responsible for the price rise and offered pieces of his flesh for sale. Cayman points out that eating human flesh symbolized a total inversion of social values, consistent with the image of the witch as the personification of moral perversion, which is suggested by many of the rituals attributed to the practice of witchcraft. The mass celebrated backwards the counterclockwise dances. Indeed, the witch was the living symbol of, quote, the world turned upside down, a recurrent image in the literature of the Middle Ages, tied to the millenarian aspirations of subversion of the social order. The subversive utopian dimension of the witch's sabbat is also stressed, from a different angle, by Luciano Parinetto, who, in Streg et Poter, has insisted on the need to give a modern interpretation of this gathering, reading its transgressive features from the viewpoint of the developing capitalist discipline of work. Parinetto points out that the nocturnal dimension of the Sabbat was a violation of the contemporary capitalist regularization of work time, and a challenge to private property and sexual orthodoxy, as the night shadows blurred the distinctions between the sexes and between, quote, mine and thine. Parinetto also argues that the flight, the travel, an important element in the charges against the witches, should be interpreted as an attack on the mobility of immigrant and itinerant workers, a new phenomenon reflected in the fear of vagabonds that much preoccupied the authorities in this period. Parinetto concludes that, viewed in its historical specificity, the nocturnal sabbat appears as a demonization of the utopia embodied in the rebellion against the masters and the breakdown of sexual roles, and it also represents a use of space and time contrary to the new capitalist work discipline. A picture. Waldensian heretics as represented in Johannes Tinctoris, Tractatus Contra Sectum Waldensium. The witch hunt developed first in the areas where the persecution of the heretics had been the most intense. In the early period in some areas of Switzerland, witches were often referred to as Wadois. End of caption. In this sense, there is continuity between the witch hunt and the earlier persecution of the heretics, which also punished specific forms of social subversion under the guise of imposing religious orthodoxy. Significantly, the witch hunt developed first in the areas where the persecution of the heretics had been most intense, southern France, the Jura, northern Italy. In some regions of Switzerland, in an early phase, witches were called herej, heretic, or wadois, waldensens. Footnote. In the 14th and 15th centuries, the Inquisition accused women, heretics, and Jews of witchcraft. It was in the course of trials held in 1419-20 in Lucerne and Interlaken that the word hexerai, witchcraft, was first used. End of footnote. Further, the heretics too were burned at the stake as traitors to the true religion, and they were accused of crimes that entered the Decalogue of witchcraft, sodomy, infanticide, animal worship. In part, these were ritual charges that the church had always moved against rival religions. But, as we have seen, a sexual revolution had been an essential ingredient of the heretic movement, from the Cathars to the Adamites. The Cathars, in particular, had challenged the church's degraded view of women, and advocated the rejection of marriage, and even of procreation, which they considered a form of entrapment for the soul. They had also embraced a Manichaean religion that, according to some historians, was responsible for the increased preoccupation of the church in the late Middle Ages with the presence of the devil in the world and the inquisitorial view of witchcraft as a counter-church. Thus, the continuity between heresy and witchcraft, at least in the first phase of the witch hunt, cannot be doubted. But the witch hunt occurred in a different historical context, one that had been dramatically transformed, first by the traumas and dislocations produced by the Black Death, 
a watershed in European history. And later, in the 15th and 16th centuries, by the profound change in class relations brought about by the capitalist reorganization of economic and social life. Inevitably, then, even the apparent elements of continuity, e.g. the nocturnal promiscuous banquet, had a different meaning than their anticipations in the church's struggle against the heretics. End of section.